Hey brothers and sisters, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the satanic antichrist propaganda that is showing its face more and more in these last days. Now, we're told in 1 John 5, 19 that we who are the children of God, we know that we're of God, but the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we need to understand that the medias of this world are going to be used by the enemy in this hour as a tool of propaganda against us. So, we're right now going to take a look at a trailer from the TV show, The Blacklist. Thursday, the search for a blacklister takes them where they've never been. Find ways, Lizzie. People will die. A strange cult preparing for acts of terror. That gives us 72 hours before he delivers his version of Armageddon. And the worst thing the team can do is get caught. Alright, so this television show is called The Blacklist, and what this is basically about is a blacklist of people, suspected criminals and terrorists, who these law enforcement officials and detectives have to find and track down, like a special unit. Now, in this trailer, we see that it says, people are going to die, and then it shows the cross and maybe a church setting. And then immediately after that, it says, a cult is planning for acts of terrorism. And it shows the Bible and the communion cup. Now, we need to understand that Satan is a deceiver. So what he is doing right now in this hour is using the medias of the world to change the public opinion about Christianity, about the Bible, about Jesus Christ. This propaganda is a fulfillment of the scripture. Jesus told us in Matthew 24, verse 9, They shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We can already see the hate of the followers of Christ in many nations throughout the world, and it is showing its face more and more here each and every day. And Hollywood and the media is playing a big part in changing the public opinion on the followers of Jesus Christ. And this is already happening in real life. These shows are meant to aid the satanic agenda that is already going on. Biblical Christians, people who are in right-wing groups, veterans, and other people who would be resistant to this satanic takeover of our society are being put on terrorist watch list by Homeland Security. I'm going to play a clip of that just so you guys can understand that this is actually stuff that is going on in everyday life. Why do they want to put these people up there? Because they are going to be the most resistant to this shift to the Antichrist system. You must understand that as a follower of Christ, you are going to be marked as one who is undesirable and not fit for this satanic society. Also, Homeland Security says people who oppose abortion or worry about the threat of illegal aliens could pose a radical threat to America. They're the ones we need to be watching at Homeland Security. Why are conservative values suddenly being singled out as a terror threat? The Department of Homeland Security sent to law enforcement agencies across the country warning about the potential for an increase in right-wing extremist activity. It warns about groups and individuals dedicated to single issues like abortion, immigration, and gun rights, and even raises a red flag about veterans returning home from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some people, understandably, when they caught word of this yesterday, have issues today. J. Allen Seculo, uh, Chief Chief Counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice. How are you doing, sir? Good morning to you. What do you hey, make Bill. of this? Good to see you again. Well, listen, this is outrageous. I've got the report in my hand. I've read it. I couldn't believe it when I came out. Bill, I, wanted, I had our office verify that it was actually correct. When I read it, uh, there's one thing that's glaringly missing here. No discussion about the real terrorists, uh, the al-Qaeda cell groups and others that are located inside the United it's States. It's all about domestic. The most, it's it's, it's the, not the overseas. Most dangerous. It, it literally changes the entire focus for the Department of Homeland Correct. Security has been doing. Correct. And it says domestic terrorists, the most dangerous or single-issue domestic terrorists, and as you said, that includes pro-lifers, that includes people concerned about the issue of immigration, and returning what they call radicalized veterans from the Iraq and uh, Gulf War. Interestingly, the whole article 
The whole assessment, as they called it, is entitled Right-Wing Extremism, Radicalization, and Recruitment. I want to tell the Department of Homeland Security, do us all a favor, catch the real terrorists. Don't worry about the grandmother on the street corner holding up a pro-life sign or some guy that legally goes in and buys a gun for hunting. Uh, and returning veterans should be handled by Veterans Affairs and make sure they're incorporated back into the uh, well, society. I, uh, we owe that to I our veterans. Think it's interesting. But to call them terrorists yeah. is just outrageous. We can see that Hollywood is one of the biggest propaganda tools in our nation. Many people will not read a book, they won't listen to a speech, they won't go and figure out things for themselves, but they will definitely listen to Hollywood. And Satan knows this. He has planted his teachings, narcissism, and all of the imagery of the beast in Hollywood movies and media. You can see that in many popular movies, Christians are depicted as crazy or backwards or anything but a clear representation of a follower of Jesus Christ. They often do the end is near thing where they make the Christian look like a crazy person who's always blabbing about the end is near. But Jesus told us in Matthew 24, starting at verse 44, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of the servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Then shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, this is a very important verse, and I, I want to express this to my brothers and sisters who look at these signs and say, oh, they've been saying it for a long time. They said this in World War II. They said this in 2012. They said, listen, it doesn't matter what people say. I will never tell you a date when the Lord is coming. But we are told here in verse 44, Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. He's going to come when we don't expect it. it. You need to understand that. So don't think that you're going to have an idea like, Oh, I know when Jesus is coming. He's going to come when you don't expect it. Now, it says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat and due seven. Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. We need to be found speaking the truth when he comes. We're not going to be surprised that Jesus came because he told us he would, but he's going to come when we don't expect it. So we must be ready and be doing the master's work when he does come. For those who aren't doing the master's work, those who say, oh, they've been saying this for a long time, and go and enjoy these things that the world is enjoying, which it refers to as smiting his fellow servants, saying, you guys don't know what you're talking about, calm down, and eat and drink with the drunken, go and partake in the things that they are taking of instead of doing the master's work. It, it's very clear cut on what it says. It says that he shall cut him asunder, that means separate him, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell, guys. That is serious, serious words. So I just want to give an exhortation to brothers and sisters who are often saying, oh, dude, calm down, bro, just stop it. Listen, make sure that you're not eating and drinking with the drunken. I love you too much to not tell you these things. This is what scripture tells us, that we need to be in the word so that this is given to us each and every day and presented to us anew. So. I just want to say that when it makes fun of the people saying the end is near, obviously it gives a caricature of it. And we are not supposed to be as these people are with the crazy face expressions, yelling at people, screaming at them, getting in the flesh. No, we're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God when we do this and speak the truth. The end is near. We are told time and time again in Scripture that it is the last time. Once Jesus came, died, and rose again, that was the beginning of the last times. So our God is long-suffering, will 
willing that none should perish, but we must know the hour in which we live. And the media is going to mock what we are saying because the media is controlled by the prince of the power of the air. It is of this world. So it's going to use foolish people to say the same thing, to try and shift the public opinion and plant seeds that, wow, people who say this stuff are foolish. Or another way that they are attacking Christianity is having serial killers and murderers uh, quote scripture and, and say that they are followers of Jesus Christ to give a false depiction in people's minds of what a follower of Christ is. We can see this clearly in Pulp Fiction where Samuel L. Jackson's character would openly kill people and quote scripture. And this should not be a surprise to us because Hollywood is one of the focal points of this world. It's one of the kingdoms of this planet. We need to understand what Hollywood is as believers in Christ so that we are not deceived by its sorcery. Hollywood is the wood that witches would use to cast spells of sleep on people. And we see that that is what happens when people watch television and movies. They go into a state of sleep where their mind is very receptive to these teachings that Hollywood is sending out. And they are teachings of the Antichrist. So just be aware, be watchful, be testing of the spirits. We're told in scripture to test the spirits to see if they are of God. And the reason we must do that is because we are in enemy territory. We are foreigners and exiles here. We should not be comfortable in this place. We have another home. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. This world is being manipulated by the evil one so he can erect a kingdom for himself. This kingdom will fall and we must not become deceived by it and be conformed to it. The Bible tells us be not conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? By being in the Word of God, by fellowshipping with other believers, by being in prayer and communication with our Lord, by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we ought not to grieve the Holy Spirit by which we are sealed onto salvation. That is something that we should be mindful of. The stuff of this world that we harbor in our heart grieves the Holy Spirit. Know not that we are a temple of the Holy Ghost. We must not grieve the Holy Spirit in us, and that should be something that we are mindful of each and every day. I posted a video called Hollywood Satanism End Time Sermons, and this is part one. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. For those of you who see what is going on in this hour, I strongly suggest you watch it. It's at my channel, End Time Sermons. If you guys have not been over here, I'm going to be posting a lot of videos up here. Right now I have a couple playlists. There's End Time Sermons. Uh, battle with sexual sin, end time Christianity, and Antichrist Media Exposed. But I'm going to be having more playlists, more sermons. God has blessed me with the ability to listen to sermons at work, and I'm going to be posting up the ones that He lays on my heart for the body of Christ in this hour. So I strongly suggest you subscribe to this channel. Check out some of the stuff that is on here. This is the meat and due season that the Lord was talking about. And do not forsake the Word of God. It is extremely important in this hour. It's the bread of life. You're not going to be able to live spiritually if you don't eat. And also, it's the sword of the Spirit. You're not going to be able to fight if you don't have your sword. So be in the Word of God daily, daily. Satan is always going to try and keep you from God's Word, and he's always going to challenge God's Word. So God bless you all. Be well in the Lord, and be watchful and mindful of this media that is trying to shift public opinion away from the truth of Jesus Christ. And shift it towards a satanic mindset and understanding of the world. It's going to be attacking Christianity. It's going to be mocking them, making them look fake, making them look irrelevant. It's always going to be posting up stuff about the Westboro Baptists and other crazy cults that it can use to slander the name of Jesus Christ. So God bless you guys and be well in the Lord.